Hey, how's it going? And today we're going to be talking about the sequencer and filming in Fortnite. If you're confused, at all confused about it, that's completely understandable. It's extremely confusing in my opinion. So I have struggled for the longest time to get my mind around it. And I understand it in Unreal Engine fairly well now, but in Fortnite it's a little bit different. So it's a struggle to get your mind around it. So I'll do my best to explain this the best I can and I hope you find this of some help. So I'm gonna walk you through every step of what I'm doing so that you can try to recreate this at home and experiment for yourself to see it with your own eyes and not just take my word for it. I'm in the blank island template right now. There's two spawners in here, one's enough, so I'm just gonna delete one. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna just film a very basic sequence. And I wanna do this to illustrate some key concepts about the sequencer. And probably the most important thing is just understanding what is the damn thing? <laughs> what is a level sequencer? Well, if we right click and we go into cinematics, there's this thing called the level sequence. And the best way that I can explain it is it's what brings your scene to life. So anything that can move or be animated usually belongs in the level sequence. So if it's something that you're specifically going to animate, it needs to be in the level sequence. And in some cases, like in Unreal Engine, if you're planning to even film it, for it to even appear, it needs to be in the level sequence. And to even film, quote unquote, anything, you need to have a camera in your level sequence. And in this case, what we're going to be doing is kind of confusing is we're going to be animating the camera itself which adds a layer of confusion. In Fortnite though, what's the most complicated thing to get your mind around is that there's a record button on the sequencer and I honestly don't understand why that's there because it looks like it's recording something but all it's doing is maybe keyframing the sequence but it's not actually rendering anything out. I honestly don't understand why there's even a record button and in fact when you press the record button it ends up deleting, sometimes it deletes your keyframes. So honestly, for what how Fortnite is built right now, there's no reason to even press the record button. Once you save your sequence file, that's as far as it goes. There's nothing to record after you saved the file. So I don't know, that could very well change in the future, and I'm sure it probably will change. But if you hit record right now, there's a good chance you'll end up deleting your keyframes. At the very end of this, I'll show you that. So to get started with this, we're gonna go ahead and get a camera. There's this tab called Place Actors. If you don't see it, come up to Windows, and it's right up there, Place Actors. We're gonna search for the Cine camera, and we're just gonna drag it onto the scene. And there it is. Although we can see it in here, in the editor, we won't be able to see this in the game, in Fortnite Creative. We, we can't see it. We can only see it here. And we can see what it sees. So we can see the camera here and we can see what it sees in this little box. We can also make it full screen, but I prefer to this picture in picture mode right now. And then if we hit the space bar, we can rotate it here. We can move it here with these controls, but sometimes I find it easier to use these controls over here on the right to move the camera. But what's confusing is it's a camera, right? But remember, we're not recording anything. And in fact, if you press a record button, you could delete your keyframes. We'll test that at the end to see if that's true. But that's what my experience has been, that do not press the record button. Now all that we need, we have this environment and we'll be able to see that. We've got this spawner, we'll be able to see that. And we've got this ground plane, we'll be able to see that. But let's just bring in a couple more things to film. So if I click on the Fortnite folder, and I search for a character. Let's bring in a character here, just so we have something else to look at, the mannequin. I can rotate the mannequin there. And then let's, do we have anything else interesting we can bring in? Just, just bring in another, one other object here, something like that. So we have a couple objects. And then the last thing we're gonna bring in is called the cinematic device. And we, this isn't viewable either. So the camera's not viewable, this isn't viewable. This is what allows us to play back our sequences. So now if I clear my search bar and go back to my level sequence, if I just click on this, double click on this, I'm now in the sequencer and you can see it's a timeline and it's set up to, for things to be keyframed. 
what do we want a keyframe? We want a keyframe, a camera movement. So let's say I'm just gonna, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a 360 degree shot. That's all I'm gonna do. So we can see everything that's in the scene. And I wanna show you that we'll be able to see not only these characters here, but we'll also be able to see spawnable characters, which means that when the camera is operating in the sequencer, it's actually showing you things in real time. So it's really interesting. It's not a recording camera. I guess that's the easiest way to say it. It's not a recording camera, it's a viewing camera. So if we come in here to track, and we go to Cine Camera Actor, we're gonna add this to the frame, and that's what our shot would look like. It put us into camera view mode automatically when we went in, when we added the camera. And so we'll be able to see this, but you'll see this character is just a static object. It has no animations associated with it. So it's just gonna stand there like a rock. The only character that's gonna have any movement is our first person player character that spawns in. You'll see him running around when we, when we do this. So what we're gonna do now is I'm just gonna do a 360 degree shot just to show you how you'd animate the camera. But maybe I want it to be a little bit longer shot. So I'm gonna come here on the in frame and I'll type in 300. I'll hit control in the scroll wheel. And then I'm gonna pull this red bar out to about the same. I guess we have 410 to play with, so. And then we just also need to drag this out to extend our the frames on our camera. Okay, so now we got everything set up and all we need to do now is animate the camera. So to do that, we just make sure we're on the first frame. We'll click this control down here on the bottom. These are really good controls. We'll make sure auto keyframe is on. And I'm just gonna put a keyframe here. This is gonna add more keyframes than I need. I could drill down and just isolate the specific dimension I'm trying to animate, but there's no harm in just keyframing everything. And now I'm just gonna jump to the end of the, the scene. Make sure the Cine Camera Actor is selected in the outliner. And then over here on this control, on the rotation, the yaw, I'm just going to click and drag it to spin around one time 360 degrees. Or I guess I can keep going a little ways. I don't wanna make people dizzy. So I'll just come back that far. And you'll notice it's automatically keyframed that action. Now if I go back to the front and hit play, we can see our sequence playing. And now, this is the most important concept of all. If I hit save, and I'll come back to the browser, this is the output of what we've just done. We, there's no need to hit record. We've saved all of our keyframed animations. We're done with the sequencer now. This is all done. There is one thing I wanna point out too though, is this camera cuts is confusing, but you can think of it as a camera switcher, but because we only have one camera, what you see up here, the reason why you see that is because it's showing you what the sequence is gonna look like, but you have to click on this usually, that little icon there to see kind of what the final sequence is gonna look like. And if you had multiple cameras, you'd click here and add those cameras. But we only have one camera and it's already bound. So we're all good. But you want this to be, you want that icon to be on when you go to normally render. And in Unreal Engine, there's a button up here and we could render this out. We could render out a video file. But you notice we, we don't render anything out because this isn't a rendering camera. It's a, it's a viewing camera in real time. It's a viewing camera. That's what it is. Okay, so now we come back here and it looks like our file exists. Now, if we wanted to create another shot, we would just right click, go to cinematics level sequence and have another, put up another camera somewhere in another part of the island and film another scene. And then we would have that scene. So these are our individual, you would think of this as like your video file, but it's not a video file. It's a, it's a keyframe sequence of things. Now, if we come up here, and we go back to our scene in general. I can go back to perspective, I believe, here. Let me jump out of this. I don't know why my frame seems frozen right now. That's kind of weird. There we go. Okay. So that happens to me sometimes. It'll lock up, and 
I don't know what, here we, we're back to normal. Okay, so you can see everything in our scene right now. Okay, so we're gonna just select this, our cinematic sequence device, and we're gonna tell it to play our new level sequence, right? Okay, and when's it gonna play? What's gonna trigger it? Well, our trigger's gonna trigger it. So we'll search for a trigger here. And we did have a trigger in the scene, didn't we? I thought I had a trigger in the scene. Oh, did I not bring a trigger? Okay. So let me get a trigger device. I gotta go get a trigger device here. Drag a trigger. There, now we got a trigger device. So let's go back to the sequencer and we'll get our trigger device. And that's gonna be on triggered. So now that's going to trigger our sequence to play back. What it's doing is it's running through its animations but it's going to be doing it in real time because we'll also be able to see spawnable characters when the sequence is playing back. So really what you're seeing with the sequence is pure animation. The pure animation of everything as seen through a non-recording camera. That's what we're seeing, really. Now what I can do is I'm going to push all these changes and show you what I'm talking about. So I'll be back as soon as that's done. It's back. It looks like we're ready to go. So... I'm going to go ahead and start the game. So let me just review what we've done. We're in the Fortnite Creative. You notice we don't see the camera anywhere. And now we do see our viewable character. Now, according to my theory that this is a viewing camera, not a recording camera, we will be able to see this spawnable character, this guy, my player character running around here. He'll also be in the shot at the same time. Well, how would that be possible? How would it be possible to see this player character if the sequence was playing back recorded footage? And it wouldn't be possible. So let's go trigger the sequence to play. It's going to do a 360 shot of the scene, and you're going to see this guy running around. Watch. Oops, how come it didn't go? Oh, I didn't start the game. Okay, here we go. See, he's filming. The camera's going, but I'm in there. See, I don't know if you saw me. <laughs> I'm going to do it again. I'm going to trigger this. There, see, did you see me? <laughs> I don't know where I went. There I am. See, I'm me off in the distance. I'm way over here now. I'm going to try that one more time. So see, it's not a recording camera, it's a viewing camera, look. So I'm gonna just, I don't know, what's the camera filming? This, the camera's spinning too fast. It's really interesting because the sequencer, you can feel it taking over the scene, but my player character is still in there, fighting for control, like I don't have total control. See, I'm, I'm just gonna stay put. See, I got my back turned. There, see? You, did you see me running there? <laughs> so it's very, very interesting, right? I mean, it's very confusing. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and end that. So I guess to summarize, spawnable characters can be viewable while the sequence is playing, but they are not recordable. And if I go back in here, if I go back into this system here, the editor, you have to just think of sequences as recorded files. I lost my browser here. Let's see. This is just a recording of keyframe animations. The camera, the Cine camera, is just a viewing camera. It's not a recording camera. And as a viewing camera, when the sequence is playing, back in the game, you can see spawnable characters. Like, you can see the first-person player character, but you don't have that much control over him. The camera's in control at that point. And so you can, you're, you can move your player character around, but the camera's controlling the view of everything. So you don't really can't really control anything. Now, I'm going to show you one more thing is... If you really want to record the sequence or a sequence and record it as a video file, you have to use screen recording software. There's no way to record a spawnable character or, or player character animations. If you want to record an animation, you have to bring it into this level here and have the character 
do out the animation here. And then you can film it in the game, but the animations have to all be keyframed and brought in to the sequencer at this level. What you just saw, what we just saw when we the cinematic player played back, the only way we could see that again as a video file is if we had screen recording software. So now I'm going to show you something. This record button. And it says start recording into the current sequence. Well, if we hit, if we make sure we're on the, this is uh, the camera view, right? And if we hit play, we should still have our keyframe sequence where the camera spins around, right? You see that, right? Okay, there's a camera spinning around. I probably should have just left the camera static, you know, but anyway, well, it will be after this. So you see, I can record this, right? So I hit record. It says, are you sure you want to start recording? And it's almost like, is it, it's a, um, I think that's the wrong word to use, record, because I don't believe anything's being recorded. Or maybe keyframed, but watch what happens when I hit record. It says, take one of Slate, new one. I don't see anything up here happening. It looks like it's doing something down here. It finished. Now if I go back and I hit play, it has deleted all my keyframes. You see that? It's wiped my keyframes out. So I honestly don't understand what the point of the record button is. The only thing that makes sense on here is the save file button. But I don't understand what the point of recording is. And you just saw it wiped out my keyframes. But now that it did that, I have a stationary shot. So now I can better show you the spawnable player character movie. So I'm gonna go ahead and push these changes and then I'll come back once those changes are done. Okay, we're back. So this is the last thing. I'm just gonna go in here and we're gonna hit start game. Now you should be able to see me because the camera's gonna be static. So I'm just gonna run over here by this mannequin. So I'm gonna hit start. The camera's gonna start filming in live time and watch what happens with my character. If I can navigate over here Yeah, you see me? <laughs> okay, let's... I know kind of where I gotta go. It's hard because I I don't have primary control of the camera. I just have this view. There, see? I see me there. You see me? So if this was recorded footage, how would it be possible to film me? You see what I'm saying? How would that be possible? I know where to go now, right over here. How would it be possible to film me if this is recorded footage? What, I crashed the party? 